Hello and welcome to the Rat Nest Podcast, episode number 19 with Regan Russell. Woo! What's up, dude? Hey. Uh, how's it going? Good, good, good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on. Thanks so much, thanks so much for being on, man. It's, it's a pleasure to meet you and, and uh, honor to interview you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. This is like my first podcast ever, so nice. let's do it. <laughs> yeah. We've been in the mode of trying to like get people that aren't used to doing this to do it, which is yeah. nice. Uh, yeah. Even like more established people are like, I don't even, I don't really do these that often. So it's not nice to get a fresh take on it. We, we're no professionals, uh, but you know, it's, yeah. uh, it's a fun, uh, fun format. I don't know, just bullshit with each other. Yeah, you know, I, I like I like the idea of getting out of your comfort zone and stuff. So, you know, bring it on. Well, that's what we're here for, bro. Just get ready to get out of that comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> we lost all the audience already on this one. We were just like bullshit. Hey, it is. Hey, <laughs> is an amazing illustrator, uh, painter, digital artist. He can do it all, um, dude. We've known each other in some sort of fashion for years now i remember the first time i met you um i like to bring this up with people that don't remember the first time that we met i don't know if you remember this it was a show at werewolf and you came in early because you were working i think and you wanted to buy the uh vacation forever tall boyfriend yeah yeah i totally, <laughs> I totally remember that i did yeah. uh that was cool i mean that like did i was i familiar with tall boy that much Going into that, um, I must have been a fan already. I, I can't even remember how long ago that was, but um, yeah, that was awesome. I was like dedicated to like getting that print and like, oh, you, know, you had curated a cool show and um, yeah, that was that was cool. I'm glad you you tell people that or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> now I just thought it was funny because you came in and then. Um, you're like, hey, I want this print. Cool. Marked it, saved it. Uh, you got the print. But then the next time we met at a show down the line, you're like, hey, you don't remember me. I bought that print at Werewolf. <laughs> That's the only reason I, you know, it, it, it sticks with me now. It's like, oh, fuck, that was the same dude. My bad. <laughs> and I think I was at your show at this point. Like maybe it's something you had at Visual or uh, yeah. somewhere. But uh, it was funny. It was just like, oh, yeah, dude, I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. I mean, like, I feel, yeah, I feel like we're not, we're not, like, super close friends or anything, but we have, like, a lot of connections, and especially when we were here in San Diego and stuff, and I feel like we had a lot of overlap, um, and, you know, we've just been connected, and a few things you've asked, you know, you asked me to be in that really small show um, at that one bar. Uh, Bonsai bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and that was cool, and, um you know, and, and just from there, you know, we've just sort of been, yeah, loosely connected and stuff. So I'm glad we can, you know, catch up here again. Totally. I was, I was saying, uh, like, we've never, we don't really hang out. Uh, we've just kind of been around each other in this art scene and doing different things uh, as far as shows and stuff go. But I've, I've been so curious about your origin story, dude. Like, your work is amazing. And, like, I, I was, I've, wanted to ask you, I don't think I've ever asked you, like, were you, where did you go to school? How were you formally trained? What got you into art? Like, where did this all start? Because uh, you can do it all. Okay, well, <laughs> thank you um, for hyping me up right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Um, okay, I'm trying to make this um, um, not super long-winded. I, I went to school, I studied fine art at UCSD. Um, I actually went to, to community college first and, and studied more traditional um, art making and things. And I, with the expectation I was going to transfer to, to a school and then I transferred to UCSD and they have like this crazy sort of theoretical conceptual program, which kind of blew my mind. Cause I was just like, I'm here to draw and paint and stuff. And they were like, Oh, well, why do you want to draw and paint essentially? Um, so that was, sort of like the um the foundation of kind of like how i learned um to make any kind of art and things and i was always just interested in drawing and things and kind of like 
you know, always just like making things representational and, and I just got really into um, making uh, just like paintings and drawings that like I thought just looked good. And then when I went to college, um, you know, that it kind of like opened it up to this idea that like art can be more than just making something look nice, I guess. Um, and then, you know, from there, I just like, I've always just been interested in, in, in using all sorts of different mediums. Um, and that is something that I, um, I don't know, I, I, I feel like um, is kind of like a good and bad thing just because, um, you know, for me, I like to uh, work in, in all these different mediums so that I can um, just try a bunch of new things and um, just get good at different mediums. I feel like there's, there's a, a quality I want to be able to like, um, uh, just be good at using different different uh, tools and things, um, but it also makes it so that like I'm not all that focused, <laughs> you know. Because you know, I, I think like, and 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 also you know, like I'll backtrack a little bit. Um, I after I went to college and then after I got a, uh, after I graduated, I um, I worked for. Uh, the U.S. government for a few years, <laughs> so I wasn't making. I wasn't oh, making. Okay. Yeah, so I wasn't making any art really, um, except for the occasional show that I was invited in. Um, and then, after, you know, after that, I was I was asked to to work at a startup uh, company with with a friend uh, who I went to college with, and so then I did that for seven years or so. Um, and then when that was done. Uh, that was in like 2017. Uh, that's like when I started to like pursue my own art career. Um, so I haven't been like making art uh, like full time, like as a professional or whatever for for all that long. I would say you know it's yeah. only been a handful that's, of years. That's mind boggling to me because yeah. when I see I was going to say the same. It's very polished and uh, you know it's very clean and put together which makes me think that you've been working on this kind of uh, style or, you know, whatever medium you're using uh, for a minute. And I know you were doing a ton of pencil work. Yeah. Was that something that carried over from when you were a kid? Is that kind of the first like style you'd say that you were like working through or like working on? Yeah, of course. I mean, like drawing with a pencil is just sort of like, sort of like the classic, what do you have to work with? You know, you got some paper and you've got a pencil usually. And um, I always enjoyed that. Even in college, I, I kind of focused on pencil drawings and in, in college that was like, I felt like drawing in pencil was not a finished way to present artwork or something. I don't know if I'm, I'm describing that that well, but like, it was always like the practice part. It's like, oh, you're gonna do a sketch for like a painting. Yeah, and, and so I, you know, in college I was like, well, I'm gonna like try to like make drawing more, like elevate drawing or something. Mm -hmm. um, and so I did that for a long time. And then I got like, like I said, you know, I, there's like a, 10 year span where I wasn't making that much art. I was probably, I was probably making like one piece a year for like 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> like it sounds weird to like put that, to say that um, out loud, but um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what happened. You know, kind of life happened. I wasn't like, yeah. I was like, Oh, am I going to be an artist? I don't know. You know, it's like, it wasn't something that I thought of all that much because I was doing th other things, you know. Can I ask you what you did for the government? Is that a hush hush? What? It, <laughs> what oh, yeah, secret, like, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's a total like. Um, Area fifty one in it. Yeah, it was like LSD kind of like. <laughs> uh, no, um, uh, I, it was really boring actually, and that's kind of why I stopped doing it. Um, so you know, there's there's, it just wasn't satisfying for me on a level like a creative level you right know? you know that's and uh so beyond that it was like 
um, the opportunity came up after that to, to work for a friend of mine doing something more creative, like a, a startup sunglasses company. And that was still, you know, I don't know if you've, I mean, you're running your own business right now, you know, you know what it's like to like do that. And, um, yeah, it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sucks <laughs> a, a lot and it's never worth it. But, um, but yeah, it, but it is like you have control over that and you like, you can baby it and it's like yours to, to do what, what you will. And that creative freedom is like a huge thing, even if it's just a little bit of it where you yeah. get to think like, well, at least I get to choose what I'm doing instead of getting told what I'm doing. Yeah. So far, you know, I, I can't imagine working for the government, dude. That sounds like a freaking nightmare to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like, it was exactly how people describe it in, in a sense. Like it's, you know, it's, I'm not going to knock people that work in the government, um, but no, no, not, I'm not saying absolutely. That's, it's a specific type of person that. Yeah, you with that. absolutely. They, you, you want some security then work for the government like there's you know and it can be a means to an end you know what i mean it's like um you know if you're you're willing to put in whatever that effort and like you know have i guess health insurance and things like that then then go for it but it was just so it was, it was soul sucking it absolutely was like literally like the red tape to get anything done was just insane and um i mean you're just like constantly filling out paperwork and shit like <laughs> exactly like you like a caricature or something you see in a movie because it's like that's literally what it is a lot of times um yeah if i, I if i can jump back i want to ask a question real quick yeah, so yeah. You, you go through school and you, you decide you're, you've gone through the government work and you've done a startup with your buddy and you decide to get back into art. I noticed my first exposure to your work, there, it was a lot of like portraits and so, uh, faces and very realistic, very detailed, like perfectly shaded and everything art. Yeah. Do, you, do you think that was because you had been out of it for so long, you were like, let me get in this hard? Or was that like, okay, I wanna learn this particularly to start? Kind of like what, what guided you in that direction? Yeah, um, I mean, it's kind of cool for me right now because well, it's sort of this double-edged sword where I feel like I'm getting older and I feel like I need to kind of establish like my, like my style or kind of my artistic vision that I'm going to share with people. Um, but also, you know, it, it's, it's, it's fun because I am sort of jumping kind of back in time to be like, what, what, like, what do I like about making work? What can I still do? Yeah, what can yeah. I learn from, from the things that I already know how to do? So there's like a lot of discovery right now. You know, like I said, you know, 2017 was kind of the year that it was like, okay, I'm going to try to, to make art for some sort of living or something. I'm going to focus on art. And, you know, I felt, you know, kind of, behind you know for the lack of a better way to describe it but because it just i had all that time in between where i wasn't really focusing on, on getting art. dusty but, yeah 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 i'm kind of like rusty I'm, I'm um i don't know what kind of art i want to make and so um but that's also like a really positive thing because um you know now i i have like the ability to just like figure it out you know and and that's uh like i feel i feel and i feel better equipped to do that as you know somebody who's uh, approaching 40 you know in, in my you know late 30s as opposed to you know if i had just graduated college or something and been like okay now i'm going to make art so so i think that gap in in time is is okay you know because I've grown as a person. <laughs> yeah. I feel I feel better about asking myself the harder questions about making art and like why I'm making art and stuff. Where, you know, if I was 24 or something, I'd be like, oh, I'm so scared to to ask any of those questions. I really feel was like it like 
Oh, go ahead, Matt. I was going to say, I really feel like that's an important message um, for artists to hear because uh, as an artist by nature, um, I mean, we're just full of crippling self-doubt, right? It's like <laughs> nothing's ever good enough. We're never doing the thing we want to do. We're never like on the path we need to be on to be successful, whatever successful is, right? So you saying that and like taking your time and like looking back and working on it and making the decision to like focus on it and not really, um, I don't know, just worry about it for all that other time is insane because uh, you know, we worry about shit every day that doesn't matter. It's like, oh, I didn't get this done. And it's like, well, who's that deadline for you to yourself? It's yeah, whatever right. you want to do at that time. Yeah. And, it, and it's like to describe it even further, it's like, it's all that crippling self-doubt is still there. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> you, it's like you're better equipped to, to, you know, own, own that experience and, and like, um, you know, basically move on to the yeah, like like start. process through it or like yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that, that's that, something, yeah, that's something I wouldn't have been able to do as in my mid twenties and right. like reflecting back on my mid twenties or whatever, my whole twenty through thirty two, you <laughs> know, years uh, experiences that you know I wasn't really equipped to to kind of handle all those things and um but yeah you know so so i feel like i i i don't feel so behind per se right now but i feel like um you know i'm, I'm just excited to be able to like like try to do this at, at yeah this yeah um yeah. So when, when you came back off of that hiatus, was it like riding a bike? Would you pick up a pencil and it was like, boom, oh, it's right here. And it, it was like muscle memory or did you have to like churn it back out and kind of work yourself back up to that level? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know if you're, you're are, are you an artist as well? Do you make work too? Uh, I wouldn't call myself an artist. I doodle. <laughs> You're all artists, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, well, Matt, Matt probably knows this feeling maybe a little more specifically, but like, um, it's sort of like you make something and you feel pretty good about it in the moment, and then the next day you look at it and it feels <laughs> like a total piece of shit. <laughs> oh, actually, I know that feeling. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's probably more universal anyway, right? It's that probably go like, yeah, it probably spans all sorts of uh whatever things that, you, that we do and stuff but um yeah so i think and at the beginning it was felt that was heavy like that was the heavy feeling um but you know that's kind of the process of making art in general and like if you can't kind of handle that experience with yourself then you know you probably shouldn't be making work anyway i mean you're, you're going to be your, your own biggest critic and, you know, jumping back into it, it was like, you know, that, that's why I, you know, when I first jumped back into it, it was like, okay, I'm going to do some pencil drawings, some portraits. Those are the things like I knew already, you know, I knew I could probably do those things. Back and to so, the basics. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of back to basics for myself. And yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it is really interesting just because I feel like I'm, relearning a lot of things and um you know the, the sort of like the world is my oyster kind of thing you know there's a lot of different directions to go from there um and i don't know like like you know four or five years back into it it's like okay like the biggest thing i've realized is that i just like to make stuff you know like it doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a drawing it doesn't have to be a painting like i just like to like make shit create yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you know and 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 matt too i know you're you're a homeowner now right and and so like you know my wife and i have lived in our house for like seven years and like even you know it's like fixing a doorknob is like <laughs> kind of satisfying in, in, in this like this it's way. crafting it's 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 crafting something it's working with something with your hands you know what i mean like carpentry construction and art like all go hand in hand. Um, you might think you're like the most creative person on the planet, but when it comes down to it, 
a lot of being a good artist is being capable of building and and like painting stuff like priming like you know what i mean just the little things that go into making art are the most important sometimes yeah yeah i agree like like i feel like we're um like we're I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I love it. I love Cut it. Cut that out. Yeah. Yeah. Cut it. It's done. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> I wanted to actually pick up from, uh, I was going to ask you, so you said 2017 was right around where you kind of shifted and you were focusing more on art and stuff. That was probably the year that we did that show at Bonsai, I think might have been 2017. Yeah. Um, was that kind of like, one of the first shows that you had been in or like group show and stuff that you've been in in a while. And like, yeah. how did that work into creating different art? Because I know after that, watching your progression, you did the solo show um, the, or the feature at Little Dame. And that was like kind of a completely different body of work. And yeah. then with the printmaking um, and the digital art, that's been a completely different thing. Yeah. How did this all uh, roll out? You know, take, take me through that, like pencil to digital. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, like, like kind of what I just said, you know, I think, I think I, e even back then, you know, I, I knew that I, I like to work in different ways. Like, I feel like um, working in one style or in one, one medium sort of gets boring after so long of doing it, you know, I, I think. Master it, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's the sort of. Good at it, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's sort of like, yeah, I, that's like the, that's kind of like the self-doubt too of it, I think. It's like, how good are you at it? And um, do you need to get better at it? like what's like what's the what like what's what's your your limit or something you, right. you know where do you want to be at, at, in this medium like what yeah. do you want to be at yeah and it's you know this is going to sound a little harsh but it's like you know we, we have this tendency to kind of like self-sabotage ourselves a little bit like once we get to a place where we feel comfortable mm -hmm. and it's like oh you're too comfortable you, you shouldn't be comfortable you, you need to like knock yourself down a few pegs or something and <laughs> and that's you know, to the detriment of, of maybe our practice a little bit, but, um, you know, I, I still pride myself on, on using all sorts of different mediums and, and being like, I like, I like to be able to do things in different ways and, and, and just using different, um, you know, disciplines and things to, to make, make things, you know, I'll just go back to saying making things, you know, cause yeah. I guess to go back a little too, it's, I just kind of formed that question like everyone knew the progression of your work like I do. Um, but <laughs> thing, yeah, the, am I even answering? Am I answering your questions at all? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're, I think we're getting it. Uh, no, I'm but, hearing answers in there. With the digital art is kind of what I was wondering. Yeah. Like you seem to jump into that like like a duck into water, dude. Like you put out digital work that first year that kind of separated. Uh, the shift in the the styles, right? It was like, the, as soon as that technology was available, you seemed to hop right on it and you did it really well and not to the point where it looks like a digital illustration, to the point where it looks hand-painted yeah. by a digital format. And it's, it's crazy to me because I, I have too heavy of hand. I hold my pencil like a gorilla. I just <laughs> never do the finesse work that you do. Yeah. And it's mind-blowing. And the rainbow connection with the ice cube and Kermit the Frog, like yeah. get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm just saying, I, I just how was that hard for you at all? Did you pick that up and you you spent like a few weeks with it and you're like, all right, I get this. That yeah, I mean, well, I I um I had tried using it was right when when an iPad Pro, the, the Apple Pencil and the iPad Pro came out and right. You know, seen some things come out uh for it and and i went to like the apple store and i like tried it out and shit and um and you know i spent like two minutes trying it out i was like this is for me and i didn't really know if it was for me or whatever um 
And, and I think that just the feel of that, that specific kind of technology, there it is. Or there's Ain't one of them. That, yeah. it, that, I love it, bro. Amazing. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, and I think the feel of that technology didn't feel like as much of a jump from traditional art making to digital that, that say, nope. like, if, you, if you used a Wacom or something, yeah, like, a, like if you were doing, like, digital art in, I guess now you'd call it more traditional sense, you know, using, like, a tablet or something um, on, you know, in Photoshop or something, and, and it just felt kind of natural to use, and, and, and it was, I don't know, it did, it's, it, I felt like I could make it feel still painterly, but digital, um, and then you just had everything that, that the technology could enhance too, you know, all the different brushes and, and just, um, to use it for your, stuff. Stuff. right. Yeah, that's really the that's really the beauty of that technology with the iPad and using Procreate or, or Adobe programs with the pencil. Even an artist like me, that's really the only uh, medium that I've really ever messed with is digital. I, I got an iPad, I got Procreate and Adobe Draw, and I went to town. And yeah. that was, it was like, I couldn't get enough. And it made me feel like I was doing well. You know what I mean? And it made me feel like I could draw all of a sudden because I could eat, I could erase easily. I could make it perfect. I could have all the layers and it gave me the opportunity to feel like I was a painter, you know, and someone like yourself that can use the technology to make an amazing talent even bigger. It, it's incredible. Even for someone like me that can go, get on there and pretend like I know how to draw and yeah. it does, it does it all for me. When you're able to boost that out and bolster it, it, it really makes a full use of that technology, and it shows. Yeah, well, well, well thank you for that. And, and that actually feels like, um, you know, like all, all these new technologies and stuff, they're, they're just tools, you know, they're tools for artists to use for whatever process, whatever finished work they want to, to put out into the world, I guess, you know, and, and it's funny because it's like, I don't think I could do a paint, like a traditional painting, like a digital painting, you know, like I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, I don't have the experience or the, you know, I just uh, don't really know how to do that. You know, I, and I don't know how I would approach that, but, um, but it's, I wouldn't say it's easy on, on an iPad, but it's like the accessibility makes it like to the point where I would tell everybody to go out and get an iPad if they want to like experiment with painting or color or, or um, drawing even, you know, like, cause you can take it anywhere. It's not messy. Um, you know, there's all these like pros to it that I think are outweigh any sort of cons that we might've had 10 years ago, you know, if we wanted to be kind of elitist and be like, you know, digital yeah. drawing is not cool or whatever. It's not whatever, whatever that yeah, is. Yeah, it's at, the scene's outgrowing that. Yeah, opinion. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, and it's like, that's not even really a thing anymore. I think what happens is like you, well, for me at least, like I'll work digitally and be like, oh, this kind of inspires me to make something more traditionally or vice versa, you know? So, um, and that I think just speaks to it being a tool and things. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I like to talk trash on uh, digital formats because I'm not good at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I can't do that. That shit sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but um, kind of transitioning from the idea of that, going back to more traditional art, can we, let's talk about yard work. Tell, tell us, a little bit about how that got started. Okay. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yard work is, um, in a nutshell, it's a mural project that I'm I'm running out of my backyard, mm -hmm. um, and that started uh, when probably a couple of years ago. I had this idea to like build a wall that I could like practice on. Like, build the wall, dude. I yeah. build the wall, dude. 
<laughs> I wonder where you got that idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder. Years ago. Yeah, just totally subliminally, yeah, building a wall. Oh, that's um, hilarious. Now I can't, now I'm not going to be able to get that out of my head. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for sure. I was like, this is a wall. I could fund it myself. I don't need to go to taxpayers. Um, <laughs> but no, okay. So, so I, I had this idea a couple of years ago, and, and I wanted to make this, this wall that I could practice on. Um, cause at the time I was getting every once in a while, like, like an opportunity to maybe design a mural or paint a mural or something, not, not too frequently or anything, but I was like, well, do I want to do murals? Do I want to do things larger scales? Like, it'd be cool to be able to practice, you know, cause it's like, it's a totally different type of way of working. Um, and so some time passed and I had, hadn't actually built, built a wall. And then a little thing happened called COVID-19, um, and I heard of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I had it. Oh, wow, man. Crazy. Well, I'm not going to make light, light of that situation or anything, but, you know, it, it's, it's pretty, pretty intense. But it's, you know, it's basically the, the biggest event of our lives that we're going to remember, you know, until the day we die. Um, and, you know, during that time, everybody's at home. Everybody's, you know, I, I was already working at home. But, you know, like, there were, you know, we couldn't go to shows, you know, I was missing kind of art shows, I was missing my friends, you know, kind of all that whole situation. And, and then that idea of building the wall kind of turned into how can I, like, bring some of my friends or, or my peers together in, like, a safe way that, that would be creative and, and you love know, it. Love can, it. we can all kind of enjoy in some way um and that's when i shifted to this idea that that you know why why don't i have people paint this wall instead of just me you know why should i be the only one that could partake in that and then also you know it's like during that during the last year and things it you know it was sort of eye-opening in this way of understanding um like personally i was just like what what do I have that other people don't have and, and how can I share that thing? And, and here in San Diego, and Matt, you know this, um, is that space is a huge <laughs> thing. You know, like, like people don't have space to work. You know, if like you're an artist, like, yeah. you know, people are like, whatever, you know, they're, they're in their bedrooms, like trying to bust out paintings and stuff. And, and so I have a backyard, you know, so I was like, well, I have this space that, that p other people could use that, that my community, my art community could, could also partake in and, and things. So um, that's all those ideas combined um, creates yard work. So then now I have this, you know, eight by eight wall in my backyard that I've built that I'm inviting artists every month uh, to paint. And, um, you know, it's kind of like no, no rules, <laughs> like no holds bar uh, mural painting. Yeah. Um, that's also a big part of it too. I wanted it to feel like there isn't a pressure to make something that um, you know needs to be approved by a client, or you know, it isn't isn't sort of a a commercial right uh, um, situation where like you know you need to balance the thing you want to make versus you know what's going to be approved by whoever. You know, so this is this is that experience. Um, I was gonna bring up something to that point of just the the first two in particular that you did with um, Nicholas Danger and um, um, blinking on blessed fires. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the space uh, cat and then the reverse cowboy. Yeah. Those, those both those murals. I was like, this is exactly what the artist wanted to do. Yeah. It, it wasn't it didn't seem like it was something that had a point or that they were pushing an agenda or an idea or anything it was just like i'm gonna have fun painting yeah. this wall and uh forgive me if i'm getting ahead of myself but um uh, after the artist does the wall in your backyard you guys do do 10 prints of that illustration or that artwork right yeah yeah and and you know like i i wanted to do the prints because 
um, since it's not like a public space, I wanted to kind of like have something physical to kind of com commemorate the wall. Right, and share have, it with people. Yeah, just, just to, to be able to share with people since they can't, you know, literally, you know, just, I guess you could literally walk into my backyard <laughs> and try to see it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that would be frowned upon, I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so that and that also gives gives what I'm doing right now is you know I'm splitting it seventy thirty you know with the artists and you know the project itself and that's just another way to uh, like I'm just I want to pay the artists too you know it's like they're spending their time to do do their thing and ultimately um, I would love to like you know have some sort of stipend or something you know like get 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 the walls funded like like for reals for reals where it's like oh this is this is like a residency or something where it's like everything's covered um this is what you can expect and you're gonna get paid for your time or something and and that's you know that's that's just you know that's how i feel as an artist you know if, if i were to do a project like this it's like that's how like I would like to be treated, you know, Absolutely. And, yeah, and it'd be cool. And, you know, and I'm trying to like pamper them and shit and like, like I make them lunch and dinner and, you know, I got like, I'm taking like drink requests and things and, and, uh, you know, that's, and it's just like a, a chill, like experience, you know, and, yeah, and, and that's just, awesome. Yeah. Just like a vibe. I like, love the concept. Yeah. It's just in my backyard, you know, so it's just like, it's like a backyard, you know, just just like a backyard barbecue kind of vibe, and and it's you know there's no pretension in the idea of of making artwork there, and um, and then and the then, name sums it up. I mean, yard work. It's like you know, it's, perfect. it's like a buddy yeah. calling you over to help you know cut some trees and pick up the leaves, and like we're gonna make a day out of it. Don't worry, we're gonna barbecue. We're gonna have a couple of drinks, but you know, there's gonna be work done. It's yard work, baby. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's exactly the, the feel, you know, it's like, you know, it's like you can, you know, yard work isn't enjoyable. It's sort of like a maintenance thing, but that's like what making art is too. And on some level, it's like, there's parts of it that is just you man maintaining your art practice. That you know, mental like, fortitude to finish. Yeah. 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 But you know, you, you're still going to do it without your shirt on with like, with like a beer in your hand and and you know that's that's the good part of it too you know so that's like your podcast i'm just like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it yeah. uh no dude tell me about the um the logo the the yw yard work with uh bradford lynn did that for you yeah, yeah. Yep. Did you work on that with them how'd you guys come up with that it's sick and it took me a second to like appreciate yeah. it but it is beautiful yeah well thank you yeah um Bradford, actually, Bradford helped me come up with the name, too. I was like, I need a name for this thing in my backyard. Um, and I told him just some keywords and stuff. And he, he literally was like, you should just call it yard work. So, so this is me on the record saying, you know, Bradford Lynn helped me with the name as well. Um, and he, he's, he's an awesome designer. And he was super easy to work with. And, you know, we've we're pretty good homies and, and we just kind of went, went back and forth a little bit. Like I just, I just wrote down some things that I thought the project was like about. And then like, like I created like a small mood board um, and, you know, and, and over the process of maybe three or four meetings or something like, like we just kind of came to this spot, you know, it's like, we, like I, I, sort of was like inspired by sort of this classic, I don't know, Americana style of, of yard work or the backyard. So it's like, you know, this big old huge, you know, like, like red and green, like lawnmower or something. And, um, you know, a dude in like a, in like a plaid shirt, like sipping on a Sprite or something while he's too, too, like mowing the lawn or something and, and he's sort of like classic ads and things. So, and like, that's kind of what the mood board was. And we kind of had all these, these kind of vintagey feeling colors, I guess, kind of these retro feeling colors. And the, the lines were, were kind of inspired by like, 
old TV logos and things, you know, um, also kind of this retro vibe and stuff. Um, but like he, he, he did like a super good job just like narrowing it down every time we met, you know? So like he had like, like a bunch of sketches uh, at the beginning and then like, you know, we kind of just went back and forth on it, you know, a few times. And, and it was actually like, as far as working on like a, a logo or like a, a lockup for like a, um, a brand or however you want to describe this, like it was like the easiest experience I've ever had, you know, after, you know, sometimes, sometimes it could be kind of pulling teeth going back and forth. But it was, it was really natural and, and uh, it was cool. Like, like the Y and the W like actually wasn't like, like I was want I always wanted to have like a Y and a W, but I also wanted it to be like abstracted. Um, and I, that's, and Bradford like totally got that. And I feel like this, this is like a perfect, like I, I bet a lot of people don't know it's a Y and a W to be honest. I, honestly, yeah. I, I look at it all the time um, since you guys have started up and I am yeah. like, every time I look at it, I appreciate it more because I'm like, the, it's the negative space that creates the Y and the W, but yeah. it, it's also that brand is a solid shape itself. So yeah. It it, ha it plays on two different levels, and uh, as an illustrator, that's like very very hard to do. At least for my brain, you know, I, I don't get that that cognitive uh, thought the way other people do, where they can uh, bring three ideas together and make them work. And yeah. you know, he did that really well. I thought with the the yard work logo and oh yeah, you're doing the embossing on the prints, like it's so sick. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know, man. I dig what you're doing. Like, who, who's coming up? Who's, who do you have? Do you have, can you stay? Who's, who's going yeah. to with you? Absolutely. I'm down to say, yeah. Um, we've got a few uh, through, um, I, I people up through August right now. So we're doing it once a month. And the next person is actually, um, um, it's El Islas, who's actually Bradford's girlfriend. Um, oh, she's like, yay, it's El. And uh, she has like, you know, this very cool sort of graphic style. He's the um, other half of Magic Item? Yeah, totally. Yep. 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 So she's she's a she's a talented designer on her own. And uh, she's uh, she's not she I don't think she's ever done anything this size. Um, so I'm excited to just see what she's she's down to do. Um, and then I have Johnny Alexander in July. Um, he's, he's a, a painter and illustrator here in, in San Diego, uh, who I've known for, for a few years. Um, and he's really cool. I, I have no idea what he's going to do. Um, but yeah, so he's next, he's after it's L. And then I have Hannah Gundrum, who is also, um, she's been doing murals, I don't think for that long, but she's, she's gotten really good at, um, uh, kind of her own style. So very, also like really graphic, um, bright colors. She uses this hard uh, black outline for things too, which is which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, and that's who, that's all I have so far. Um, that's honestly, awesome. like that's the same every, moment, Yeah, yeah. Every everybody that I come come in contact with, like, and, and we talk about yard work, I'm always like. You guys have anybody that might want to do this you know so if you guys have anybody you should shoot me a shoot me a line or something you know so yeah, absolutely yeah. hey I, I just want to be clear a moment ago i was not scrolling on my phone ignoring you while you were explaining the yard work logo i was actually trying to look for it so that i could put, display it but we'll, we'll put that up on the screen while that's playing oh, but yeah. what i did come across on that is on your instagram it made me chuckle your annual selfie holding your pa your paintings up oh, kind of awkwardly that that's a great picture man oh thanks man. uh and that kind of leads right into the next thing i wanted to ask about you're you're currently at the gabba gallery right down in la or yeah, you were show, you were there i was just there that show ended um that show ended in like the end of may but i was there for okay so it was through may yeah 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 most of may um Awesome. That's a great yeah. venue to get up in, man. And I, yeah. I, the pictures look great. And that art that you displayed there is 
a lot not they're not portraits right. <laughs> yeah man yeah i do it all man. yeah it's, yeah well gabby, gabby geller is awesome jason the owner he's he's amazing and he's always been really like um uh just supportive of, of the things that that i've wanted to do as an artist and i was like they're not gonna be portraits. Is that cool? Like, he's like, yeah, man, do do whatever you want. You know, he's like, and he's just been supportive. So, and especially that's in the awesome. sense of like a gallery, you know, that's always, you know, that that that's helpful for an artist to like have that support. You know, so you know, I've had some owners kind of be like, well, do you want to do this a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, but, but you know, so that was cool and and yeah those are those are super different and i like them <laughs> it was very cool i like them a lot too man i yeah. like them a lot too and it never hurts it never hurts to see your name on the wall right yeah yeah, yeah it's my name like super huge up there i was like yeah. lovely lovely so coming out of covid19 uh assuming that the world returns to normal in the next few months what is going to be different about the art scene oh my god <laughs> oh my god wow he just dropped a bomb on you that's heavy what's gonna be different what do you i do, do you think people are just like understanding that they can be more independent and they don't have to rely on like uh the idea of showing work somewhere or i think that you, that's been i think it's the opposite i think that's already been the the consensus you know I, I think there's still like you know there's all obviously always going to be like galleries that you want to be in or you want to sh show or or like groups of people that you want to show artwork with and things like that um but as far as like you know making a living and and marketing yourself i think it's you know it's it's for years been like oh you can do it yourself you know and but i think as far as you know us coming out of whatever the last year and a half has been <laughs> i don't know like you know <laughs> like, yeah. if i no. may i don't mean i don't mean to speak out of school here but it sounds to me like you just spent the last 20 minutes telling us what you think it's going to be in your <laughs> yard work project like it is hey. diy it's in the backyard it's creating yeah. yourself we don't need a sure. gallery we don't need the internet. We're going to do it right in our own backyard for the community. And I think that is an awesome concept. And I think that's something that could catch fire all across everywhere. People are going to hear that idea. Guys with drive like yourself that want to help the community, not just of artists, but also where they live just to beautify the area. I think that could be a huge, uh, get a huge boost in popularity. And we might start seeing a lot more of that. Just through COVID, people realized we could do everything on our own, not just create, but also the galleries and the curating and everything. Yeah, that, that's a that's a good perspective. I, I haven't really thought about it that way. And, you know, the way, you know, Angela and I, my wife, um, we talked about like, man, what if we like took the wall on like the road or something? Like, what if we you do it in different cities and like, you know, you go to, you, yeah, you go to artists in different cities and be like, Hey, we have this wall. Do you want to work on it? You know, we're, we're here. Um, you know, so we've, we've had those types of thoughts and those kinds of ideas. And, and yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. I think these, it's still like, I, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's like, like having, having a gallery or having just a space to show art, you know, especially in a, you know, a commercial setting, like that costs money. It costs a lot of money. And, and, you know, COVID has kind of proven that like, you know, if people are going to stay home, then, you know, how can you afford, you know, a space like that? And is right. it worth it to have a space like that? So um, I think that somebody will always come around and be like, yeah, we should have a space. Um, to, to show our artwork in but I, I think yeah I think like having these sort of alternative spaces and things is is that could be big I don't know that's my answer Dude. alternative yeah, spaces man. in people's backyards to make art yeah, yeah. that's what's happening 
I mean, we've seen the trend in like alternative comedy spaces. We've seen it in like food trucks in the last 20 years. Yeah. A huge comeback in being their own like alternative space to the commercial brick and mortar restaurant. It's like, why not art? Like, why can't we obviously can do art anywhere? Where are these shows that are just happening for no one in like a field or, you know, sure. Um, sure. maybe, maybe there'll be some sort of resurgence in that uh, because of the idea of doing it yourself because we have. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, I, I would, I was, oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, I was just gonna say that, you know, I think what I like about this yard work project is that it, it isn't, um, it isn't like grounded in, in like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's not grounded in like, it being, it, it being popular or something, you know, it doesn't, it's not like I need people to come here to experience it, to continue it on per se, you know, like if you have a gallery, like you need people to come, come to that space. You need people to understand that it's um, like an important space or, or however you want to describe that. But like this, you know, it's, since it's in my home, like, like I, I don't need it to be anything other than what it is, you know. And, and yeah, it's validated every time you look at it. Right, you know, and, and that's that's how I frame it up for the for the artist too. It's like, hey, this is a space where like you don't have to worry about um, anybody else seeing it if you don't want to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this is this is all about you and your shit and what you want to put on it, um, and that's like that's liberating. And and there's a you know, an obvious sense of freedom, I think, to that. So, and that's, that's what, that's, you know, make painting fun again. That's, hey. <laughs> build a wall, make painting fun again. <laughs> yeah. But what else can, what else can I use from, from that time to, <laughs> to, to, to describe this? Uh, you just spawned uh, a whole line of merch. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, I, I um, absolutely yeah. love taking out. Um, dude. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. So before we get going here, man, is there anything else um, we could shout out or that you want people to check out? We check out, drop the um, Instagram. Do you guys have a website for yard work yet? Yeah. So, so everything's basically um, yard work SD, like San Diego. Um, so at yard work SD, yard work SD.com. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure if you just look up yard work SD, you know, or, or it'll come up. So, um, yeah, I would love for people to check it out again. It's like, I would love, I'm still trying to figure out ways to like fund it in a, in a meaningful way, you know, sort of self-sustaining, you know, getting artists paid. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, you got to prep, prep the wall and you've got things that go in, into that. And, um, you know, so we still need eyes on it in that sense to like, you know, donations or people buying the prints and, and things like that. So if people are interested in it, check it out, Yard Work SD, um, and, you know, stay tuned for that, I guess. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's been a pleasure talking with you today, Regan. Appreciate you making time for us and, and coming on and, and being so open and, and willing to share about all these random topics that we threw at you. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope I hope there was like some coherence, you know, in there and things. And uh, thank you for having me on, guys. It's, it's been a pleasure and stuff, so. No, no, it, was, it was quite cohesive, great conversation. <laughs> Sorry, Matt, I'll quit, I'll, I'll quit interrupting you. You go oh, now. No, you're good. I was just gonna say, um, I've talked with you outside of your house a couple times, just yeah. picking up prints or dropping off artwork or whatever it has been. And we sit there and we bullshit for 20 minutes. So I was like, yeah. we could do this for an hour. Let's go, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, this, this is cool. I mean, uh, you guys are, are doing, doing it up. I'm glad you guys are doing this. This is also, you know, this is what it's all about too, you know? Um, right. Thanks, yeah. man. It's great. It's a great outlet for anyone that wants to hop on it. I just want to make it more accessible to everybody. If anyone's listening to this that's an artist and you want to talk, reach out. Um, I, you know, it's just one of those things where I'm just hitting up friends and, and acquaintances and stuff and trying to 
keep it moving along, but uh, really have to just uh, take a step back sometimes and think like, all right, what do we want to do with this? Right. Right. Yeah, and if and if the whole focus is exposure, we want to make sure that that can reach as broad as as possible for as many artists as possible without, you know, stretching it too thin and and making it seem just repetitive. I don't you know, and so this podcast brought to you by Liquid Death Water or whatever the fuck you know. What it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it it was a great conversation, Regan. Really appreciate you being here, man. No, thank you guys. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Well, we'll talk again soon. Um, at maybe after summer when you got a few more under the belt and we'll see like how the process has been going and you know, what to expect from me then. Yeah, man, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll look forward to, to, uh, listening and watching the rest of your, your podcast and stuff and enjoy your bike trip, man. Thanks, man. I'm not excited. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a long one. Yeah. Oregon to Oakland, baby. Oregon to Oakland. What are you going to be doing, Jim? What's 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 your two weeks during that time look like? Chill. Oh, I got lots. I got lots of responsibilities to be <laughs> taken care of, so it won't be any anything too uh, much of a vacation for me. Sure. We're sure. hopefully going to be getting getting this podcast up to twenty uh, first century here, so may, hopefully production cool. values are going to be looking good, and and mostly stuff on the post end uh, and off off camera that stuff do, doesn't see. Yeah. But, yeah. We're gonna make sure this starts running smooth as a top. That's cool. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening and and thanks for uh, checking it out and keep keep watching. For sure. Yeah. Thanks, man. It was great talking to you. It was good catching up. Um, if there's anything Ratness can do for you as an artist or for yard work, let me know. <laughs> no, we got your back, dude. Yeah. That's cool, man. Well, yeah. Glad to be a part of this, and you know. It's just Brad, you know, so. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks for talking to awesome. me. All right. Been Take us out, Maddie. Yeah. We'll catch you guys next week. <laughs> See you guys. Yeah, See later. You.